Between late 2017 and 2018, Soul List was one of the most widely praised Linux distributions out there, with many innovating new features as well as its new desktop environment in addition just to its overall stability. However, since then, Solus seems to have taken a nosedive due to questionable distro politics, a lack of progress, and the disloyalty of key members. Now, DistroWatch isn't the best ranking system in the world, but this can be seen in the rankings, as they were number 7 in 2018, 2019, and they went all the way back to 27 in 2022. DistroWatch has also marked it as dormant, meaning that there has not been any activity as of recent on the project, although not being officially discontinued. So what the hell happened to Solus? Before we get into that, let's talk about what made it great. Our story starts in 2012 with a small distro called Solus. The distro was created by Aiki Dortry, I, I think is how you say the name, and is completely different from modern day Solus. Solus OS 1.0 was based on Debian and shipped with GNOME 2 with a Windows 7 like layout and a custom menu. Overall, it made its Debian base a lot more user friendly for new users. Later in 2013, alphas would come out for Solus 2.0. It never did leave the alpha stages, but in its development state, it actually induced a new fork of GNOME Classic called Consort with its own file manager and window manager. Although the desktop would get overshadowed by Cinnamon and Mate, or Mate, which both had similar goals as far as developers. Unfortunately, this project would come to a very abrupt end as in October of 2013, Solus partnered with Numix, and this sounds fine, but four days later, out of nowhere, Solus OS announced its end. According to the FOSS Force, this could have been something to do with the founder having issues putting food on the table while working on Solus. And then Getin was probably his dream job, wanting to focus on that instead of Solus, and that was the end of the era of Solus OS. Until a couple months later when Evolve OS was being worked on. Unlike Solus OS, this was not a Debian base, it was actually based on OpenSUSE, before they went ahead and made it its very own independent base. Very early builds of Evolve OS had a desktop that looked like a merge between the after forementioned Consort DE and Cinnamon. Although, as this desktop evolved, uh, no pun intended, it started getting closer and closer to the budgie we know today and until the Chrome OS lookalike we've seen in Evolve OS's betas. Speaking of betas, in January 2015, the very first beta came out, which featured its forks of the Pardis Linux package manager called EOPKG as well as its very own software center. Evolve OS then changed its name to Solus due to a naming dispute. And that was the very beginning of the Solus we all know and love today. Real quick, I do have to mention this video is sponsored by Linode. Use Linode to spin up your very own Linux server in the cloud, whether that be a wide variety of Linux distributions or something from their one-click marketplace. They also have storage servers, VLANs, guides, and a whole lot more. Make sure you check out Linode. There'll be a link down below for a $100 60-day credit. Solus then would have a few more releases with Beta 2 adding a new custom GTK theme and the release candidate 1 adding its driver manager. Finally, in December of 2015, Solus would come out with its first stable release 1.0. Solus would slowly get better and better over time as we got some quality of life improvements in Solus 1.1 and 1.2. Having a new software center with the third party app support, it would also add a Mate version with Solus 1.2.1 and it had a couple of major bug fix releases. But things really started loading when they came out with the version 2017.01.01. Yes, they did switch to the date-based releases. This extended on the third-party app features in the Software Center and added more expansive categories to the Software Center. Solus 2017.4.18 would also add a GNOME version and a new boot manager to prevent breakages and improve overall stability. Late 2017 had the release of Solus 3. Yeah, we're back on numbered releases. But this release added Snap support, a new theme called Adapta, an overhaul in the search function, vertical panels, docs, transparent panels. This, in my opinion, is kind of the golden age of Solus and many other Linux content creators and reviewers definitely agreed. Even I absolutely loved Solus. A few years after that release, I made a video covering my 30 days using Solus which it overall was a great experience and I still occasionally use the budgie desktop environment today. 
The only real issue at the time was the repository was kind of small, but with flat packs and all that, it really was not a big deal. But while Solus 3 was probably the golden age of the project, it was also where things started to kind of go a little downhill. For one, it took Solus over a year to release the next version of Solus 3.9999. While version 3 was amazing and not that much needed to be changed as it was a rolling release, the version numbers are really just snapshots. They still never really updated the ISO during this time. And that made installing Solus on bleeding edge hardware a painful experience overall. Ike Dotary, the founder, would eventually leave the project right before the release of 3.9999, resulting in several issues with the project's infrastructure. The core team didn't have access to the domain, which resulted in a migration from solusproject.org to get Solus. And most importantly, their Patreon account was unaccessible, causing, of course, issues with funding. All of this led to Solus 4.0 honestly being kind of a, a disappointing release. And probably the main problem with this is it just promised way too much. They were showcasing their new software center, which still has not come out to this day. They were working on a new package manager, which also still has not come out. And the Plasma version that they showcased, oh, just a mere testing ISO. Budgie, however, did have a lot of updates, but most of them were just minor feature improvements. It also shipped with Plata instead of uh, App. Ad Adapta, I, I don't know who names these themes, which is cool, I guess, but that was about it for the entire update. All that promise, and we got some budgie updates and a new theme, basically. And from that release, there still hasn't been like a major update since then. There have been some minor updates, such as the 4.1 release in 2020, which came out 10 months after 4.0. All it added was updated packages, ZST compression for the ISOs, a few minor budgie updates, and some small technical changes that we as normal people will never notice. Another 13 months later, 4.2 came out. All this added was, again, package updates, another minor budgie update. That added a new implementation for the desktop icons and the system tray. Five months later, we had budgie 4.3 which again was just an ISO update with some budgie changes. And that came out in July of 2021. Since then, there have been no major updates to the system or any new fresh ISOs, absolutely nothing. That's almost been two years. Granted, Solus is a rolling release distribution, so you're able to update to those newer packages from its repositories, but it's still just a bad user experience to try to install a, a two-year-old ISO on your computer and then sit through the 1.3 gigabytes of updates if it works with your hardware. <laughs> Outside of its just releases and updates, Solus has been making some uh, questionable decisions, mainly the issue of package politics. Solus has a very small repo and very commonly rejects packages for almost no reason. The biggest example of this was LibHandy, LibHandy is a library developed by Prism and GNOME to make GTK apps adapt to smaller displays like phones and improve touch support. However, Solus refused to ship LibHandy due to one of the developer's experiences not liking mobile-first development. This resulted in a ton of GNOME applications, including GNOME Web, a web browser which should be up-to-date being held back, and also blocked many other new GNOME applications from even being packaged. This one issue results in Solus being kind of a mixture of modern and old packages on the GNOME stack. Things got even more heated with the announcement of Libueta, if that is how you say it. Joshua Stropel, who ran Solus at the time, announced that they were switching Budgie to EFL as a toolkit and deprioritizing the GNOME edition. While other distros did have a little beef with GNOME over this, including Pop! OS, which resulted in them kind of developing or working on developing their own cosmic desktop environment in Rust, not packaging it and blocking a platform of Libueta powered apps is on another level. Finally, in the beginning of last year, Joshua Stropel announced his departure from Solus. He was one of the main project leads after the founder left, and he is the lead developer in the Budgie desktop environment. On one hand, this is kind of signaling that Solus is on its dying legs with limited minor OS updates in just about two years. Even with Joshua leaving, Solus still seems to be having issues. Recently in January this year, the form and dev tracker went down due to libvert DNS MASQ issue. The dev tracker and forms are still not up to this day as of at least recording this. 
they're also still having only a small amount of developmental progress. Just recently, as mentioned in the beginning, Distro Watch changed the Solus status from active to dormant, which like I said means that the Distro is still technically being worked on, but they haven't had updates in forever. DistroTube also recently released a video where he says he does not recommend anyone to be using Solus until they can prove that they're maintaining the Distro again. However, hopefully, all this can turn around. Just recently after we finalized this video script, Josh came back to the Solus subreddit and posted Writing the Ship, a plan that details the comeback of Solus. It starts with spinning up a new alternative infrastructure for Solus, including a new repository server, new package building server, and a new dev tracker. There will also be some organizational changes. Finally, he stated that familiar faces will be rejoining the project or collaborating, which may mean the original core dev team will be coming back to the project. So, while Solus may look dead, I desperately hope that Solus is more of a rise, fall, and then rise again type situation. Budgie is now a separate organization from the Solus team, which means that the Solus team no longer has to worry about developing a desktop environment and can focus on things like their new software center and updated package managers. In another recent Reddit thread, a team member talked about Solus's plans. While the biggest priority is definitely fixing the infrastructure of the project, they also plan on releasing an updated ISO, adding Snap and Flatpak to the software center, adding it secure boot support, switching to Pipewire, and Finally, adding that new package manager. Now real quick, right before publishing this video, they decided to even release more news in regards to Solus, and that is that they've just recently announced that going forward, the new versions of Solus are gonna be built upon Serpent OS. This should be bringing a lot of new features that Solus is going to be needing to be at all innovative again. And some of the things that they're actually going to inherit from Serpent OS includes the build system, the MOS package manager, and atomic and immutable file system, as well as support for the ARM architecture. This is the Serpent OS website right here, and honestly, I'm not quite familiar with this distribution. I personally have never tried it out, so I can't really speak on it too much but I will be linking to this It's Foss article down below, which really goes into detail about what it is, the changes that they're gonna be doing, and maybe, just maybe, with this major roller coaster of a ride that is the uh, operating system, Solus OS. This, the organizational changes, and everything that they've been doing, basically starting after I wrote the script for this video, <laughs> hopefully it becomes great again. With all that, all the resources and everything I mentioned will be linked down below, including an article on techhut.tv with a bunch of links and references for just about everything I talked about. So, with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day, and goodbye.